what this one's going to involve looking at is uh, looking at the ways that uh, areas of triangles can be actually worked out. Something that sometimes students can find uh, a little bit tricky to see the connection between a half base times height and obviously the one we use with our more senior students which is the half AB sine C rule. So uh, this little file and the activities that go with it will actually take you through and show you how it's all connected. With, the, uh, with this file I've actually written it in a way that makes it so that again the students are very self-sufficient. So um, hopefully students can work at their own pace and you're there to, to talk them through things but also to, to make it available to them that uh, you, can, you can help out the students who are having more trouble. So where do we find these things again? Again back on the uh, Australian Curriculum Inspired website this one I will assume will end up in the year 10A uh, one because it's a little bit more complex than the basic year 10 and uh, again it will have all the usual documents that I showed you earlier. So the idea, and I'll take you through this very quickly because I know we have um, limited time, but uh, Jack has got a problem about trying to find uh, the area of a tile. He's trying to find the area of it. So he can go in and we can see that Jack's got, a, got his tile. It gives you the information already. Uh, it talks about how we've learned already about a half base times height, but what about non-right angle triangles? So. Again, you can see, pretty much talks the students through, tells them what, what rules they surely know. And down the bottom here it says, we're going to go in and have a look at a couple of triangles in the moment. And we're going to press control followed by the dot, full stop, or decimal point, uh, which, are, which will actually cap capture some of the results that we, uh, we get with these triangles. So I'll show you how that works in a moment. It then talks about repeating the process for five different triangles and then the students have to fill in the information on the worksheet. Okay, so we have this triangle. It has different information, very random. If we go into 1.8, you'll notice at the moment that there is no information there at all. It's a totally blank spreadsheet and this has already been set up for the students and yourself. So going back to 1.7, I might just move this triangle around a little bit by just grabbing one of the vertices. And then I'm gonna go Control, and full stop and you'll notice above the full stop key there's the word capture. So what that's done is actually captured that live screen. So if we go back into the 1.8 you'll now find that it's got the base, the height and the area and it's recorded that information based on a half base times height. If I go back in to 1.7 drag the triangle around, make it something totally different, control decimal point. If we go back in, you'll notice that it's now recorded the second area. Now the students are asked to do five of those. I won't do that here now. But what they can do is again, there'll be an activity sheet available. This one's actually set up as just a Word document at the moment. So the students can look at this, this and go through. Again, it gives them all the information about the file like I mentioned earlier talks about the introductory screen. It gives them a bit of an introduction and then it outlines to the students exactly what they need to be doing. So rather than having to, to jump between screens if they forget what they have to push, it's already provided for them on this handout. It then talks about that they need to record their information, so viewing the results, and down at the bottom it says record the information in question one. So later in the table, well in the uh, handout, sorry, there's actually a table and the students have uh, space for them to record everything. It then talks about how those uh, values could have been worked out and the students are encouraged to try a half base times height with the base and height from their table and check that their areas are correct. And again they can use a scratch pad or other ways of doing that to get the right answer. Okay. Then they can move on and start looking at well what happens if it's not a right angle, a, a, a triangle that has a base and a height. So what about if it's something that might have two sides and an angle? So again, students can go through, have a look at the information that's provided to them. It talks about this half A times B times sine theta rule. Again, the students are given a triangle, which was back here on the 1.7. And what you'll notice is if I now scroll through and look at the areas for this and then go through, the students are getting the same area, 
but are get using different information to get the same areas. So what this is confirming for the students is that they are there's different ways of working out the area of a triangle. They don't have to just use a half uh, height, uh, base times height. Now once they've got that information, again the students can come into their handout. There's information up higher and then there's a table for them to record the information. It talks about the rule and then it takes them through and asks them to actually calculate it. So again, the students are not just relying on the technology, the mathematics side of things is also being enforced. So it's, it's really encouraging them not just to rely on what they're being shown, they're, they're actually expected to then see that there's a, there's a mathematical importance to what they're doing as well. If I can just add to what Stephen's doing there, uh, a couple of things that really jump out is that if teachers are correcting students' work and having a look at their responses, every student ends up with a different set of uh, values for their side A and side B. If they don't, you pretty much know they're copying because the probability of them generating exactly the same values would be near enough to a zero probability. And the other thing, of course, is as Stephen said, is being reinforced, they're writing the stuff down by hand. But the use of the dynamic geometry, I've done activities sort of similar to this by hand, and they're not as convincing because when the student tries to measure the angle by hand, it's so easy for them to be out what, by one degree and then they miss the point entirely. The area of the triangle doesn't end up the same. They see it as approximate. Uh, and, and therefore having the dynamic geometry and getting that area the same at least to a couple of decimal places, the, the students are much happier to say, yeah, that's the same area. Thanks, Peter. Yeah, ex exactly right. And, and that's something I've found using this activity with my own students that uh, I know whether they're copying or not. It's very, very obvious very very quickly. Okay, the next thing, uh, it, again, the TNS file takes you through and it just talks about checking your answers using your, your rule, et cetera, et cetera. It just reminds them about using degree mode just in case they're getting weird looking answers. And then it talks about um, trying the four extra triangles that are, that are included with the worksheet. It now talk, goes on and uh, asks them to work out the uh, information for Jack's tile. Now this is the part that I always like to reinforce to students is that there's a reason, there's mathematics behind why we're doing this. So we've now seen that this works and it gives you the right answer. But now, and again the handout takes you through and ex explains to the students what they need to be doing. It actually talks about, well, why does this rule work? So there's a little interactive thing where they can grab the green triangle and actually move it and separate it into two triangles. So they can see that, okay, this triangle, it's not necessarily something that has a height and a, and a base. It could be an A and a B and an angle. But they can actually separate it into two different triangles by just grabbing it. Moving on to the next page, it then starts talking about the idea of is there a connection? So we can look at the blue triangle and start saying, well, what do we know about the angle, the A and the H? And hopefully students start seeing, well, theta, opposite, hypotenuse, the height is actually our opposite side here, and they can see that this is a right angle triangle, and they can work with the idea of our trig functions and sign. It then says, well, let's go back to our handout. Sorry, people, I've just got to minimise something here. Okay, so if we go back to our student handout, again, the students are actually taken through that above, and then there's a place here where they can do their working out. Something to do with Jack's um, tr uh, original tile. And then there's information about where they can put down their rearrangements and looking at the connections. And it gives all the information for the students to hopefully be able to explore and see the connection between the area equals a half base times height and the rule that we've just worked out of a half AB times sine theta. Now like previously, as I mentioned earlier, there's also a teacher's answer version of this. So again, this is the one that the, the students could have if they wanted with all the solutions written in. Um, and again, we'll talk about varying answers like uh, Peter mentioned before. And there's also a teacher's notes version that will be available, and that's the circle one. Sorry, I pulled up the wrong one there. And just to let people know, the difference between the uh, teacher or the, the answers and the teacher notes, we provide tips. So say, for example, um, if I put down the answers for that factor one, then 
um, you could just say, oh, that's great, that's some magical mystery formula. But the teacher notes say, they'll give the, the, uh, some clues, I guess, some prompts that you can also give students that are getting close but haven't quite got there yet. Um, so it includes some subtle hints and suggests maybe give the, uh, the students another group of numbers if they haven't quite got it yet. So based on the experience of people that have done these activities before, um, the sorts of things that they've used, we put those or add those into the teacher notes. Yep, and, and that's the uh, thing I've just brought up here. So this is now the teacher's notes version, so unlike the answers, which just gives the answers for the, the teacher and the students, this actually now goes in and talks about the, uh, the correct na national curriculum statement and the number. So again, if you have to report back to your head of department, all the information is included. It talks about, again, some specific things for the teachers to know about downloading. And again, I won't scroll through the whole thing, but you can see that it talks about students should get different results. So just to highlight the fact that you're not looking for the same answer for certain things. So hopefully very easy to use, very direct for the teacher and gives them all the information that they, they need. So that, that's the area of the triangle um, activity. Mm -hmm.